Let's just talk about the near-term future here or what you think is likely to happen. Obviously, we'll be getting better and better at building narrow AI. You know, Go is now, along with chess, seated to the machines, although I guess probably cyborgs, you know, human, human computer teams may still be better for the next 15 days or so against the best machines. But eventually, I would expect that humans of any ability will just be adding noise to the system. And it'll be true to say that the machines are better at chess than any human computer team. And this will be true of many other things, driving cars, flying planes, proving math theorems. What do you imagine happening when we get on the cusp of building something general? How do we begin to take safety concerns seriously enough so that we're not just committing some slow suicide and we're actually having a conversation about the implications of what we're doing that is tracking some semblance of these safety concerns? I have much clearer ideas about how to go around ta tackling the technical problem than tackling the social problem. If I look at the things that, way that things are playing out now, it seems to me like the default prediction is people just ignore stuff until it is way, way, way too late to start thinking about things. Uh, the way I think I phrased it is there's no fire alarm for artificial general intelligence. Uh, did you happen to, to see that particular essay by any chance? No, no. The way it starts is by saying, what is the purpose of a fire alarm? You might think that the purpose of a fire alarm is to tell you that there's a fire so you can react to this new information by getting out of the building. Actually, as we know from experiments on pluralistic ignorance and bystander apathy, if you put three people in a room and smoke starts to come out from under the door, the people like it only happens that anyone reacts around like a third of the time. People sort of like glance around, to see if the other person is reacting and they see, but, but they like try to look calm themselves. They don't look like started if there isn't really an emergency. They see other people trying to look calm. They conclude that there's no emergency and they keep on working in the room even as this starts to fill up with smoke. This is a pretty well replicated experiment. I don't want to like put absolute faith because there is a replication crisis. Um, but there's a lot of variations of this that found pretty much basically the same result. Anyway, I would say that the real function of the fire alarm is the social function of telling you that everyone else knows there is a fire and you can now exit the building in an orderly fashion without looking panicky or like losing face socially. Right. It overcomes embarrassment. Yeah. It's in this sense that I mean that there's no fire alarm for artificial general intelligence. There's all sorts of things that could be signs. Alpha zero could be a sign. Maybe alpha zero is the sort of thing that happens five years before the end of the world in across most planets in the, in the universe. We don't know. Maybe it happens 50 years before the end of the world. You don't know that either. So no matter what happens, it's never going to look like the socially agreed fire alarm that no one can deny, that no one can excuse, that no one can look to and say, why are you acting so panicky? There's never going to be common knowledge that other people will think that you're still sane and smart and so on if you react to an AI emergency. Uh, and we're, we're even seeing articles now that seem to tell us pretty explicitly what sort of implicit criterion um, some of the current senior respected people in AI are setting for when they think it's time to start worrying about artificial general intelligence and alignment. And what, these, and what these always say is, I don't know how to build an artificial in general intelligence. I have no idea how to build an artificial general intelligence. And this feels to them like saying that it must be impossible and very far off. But if you look at the, the lessons of history, like most people had no idea whatsoever how to build a nuclear bomb. Even most scientists in the field had no idea how to build a nuclear bomb until they woke up to the headlines about Hiroshima. By, or, or, or the Wright Flyer. News spread less quickly in the time of the Wright Flyer. Two years after the Wright Flyer, you can still find people saying that heavier-than-air flight is impossible. And there's, and there's cases on record of 
one of the Wright brothers, I forget which one, saying that flight seems to them to be 50 years off, two years before they did it themselves. Fermi said that a critical, the sustained critical chain reaction was 50 years off if it could be done at all, two years before he personally oversaw the building of the first pile. And if this is what it feels like to the people who are closest to the thing, not, not, the, not the people who like find out about the news a couple of days later, the people who have the best idea of how to do it, who are the closest to crossing the line, then the feeling of something being far away because you don't know how to do it yet is just not very informative. I mean, it could be 50 years away. It could be two years away. That's what history tells us. But even if we knew it was 50 years away, I mean, granted, it's hard for people to have an emotional connection to even the end of the world in 50 years. But even if we knew that the chance of this happening before 50 years was zero, that is only really consoling on the assumption that 50 years is enough time to figure out how to do this safely and to create the social and economic conditions that could absorb this change in human civilization. I mean, the way Professor Stuart Russell, who's the co-author of probably the leading undergraduate AI textbook, uh, the way Stuart Russell put it, the same guy who said you can't bring the coffee if you're dead, is imagine that you knew for a fact that the aliens are coming in 30 years. Would you say like, well, that's 30 years away, like let's not do anything? No, it's a big deal if you know that there are aliens, that there's a spaceship on its way toward Earth and it's like going to get here in about 30 years at the current rate. But we don't even know that. There, there's this lovely tweet by um, uh, a fellow named McGaffey, who's one of the major economists who've been talking about uh, labor issues of AI. Um, I, I could perhaps look up the exact phrasing, um, but it was it roughly, he said, guys, stop worrying. We have no idea whether or not AI is imminent. And I was like, right. that's right. not really a reason to not worry now, is it? It's not even close to a reason. That's the thing. It's just this assumption here that people aren't seeing that it's just a straight up non sequitur. Referencing the time frame here only makes sense if you have some belief about how much time you need to solve these problems. You know, 10 years is not enough if it takes 12 years to do this safely. Yeah. I mean, the way I would put it is that if the aliens are on the way in 30 years and you're like, eh, you should worry about that later. I would be like, when? What's your business plan? When exactly are you supposed to start reacting to the aliens? Like, what triggers that? What are you supposed to be doing after that happens? How long does it take? What if it takes slightly longer than that? And if you don't have a business plan for this sort of thing, then you're obviously just using it as an excuse. If we're supposed to wait until later to start an AI alignment, when? Are you actually going to start then? Because I'm not sure I believe you. What do you do at that point? How long does it take? How confident are you that it works? And why do you believe that? What, is the, what are the early signs if your plan isn't working? What's the business plan? 